Okay, hi everybody. This is a new series, or will be, uh, from my Ganalia. I'm going to call it um, Favoritism. And what I'm going to look at is all of the content, all of the um, stuff I've been looking at on social media. And this will be one way to introduce, um, well, one way to talk about everything that's been going on that I've been kind of um, absorbing in the time that I've been working on issue zero. I'll try and maybe do this every couple of weeks or so. Um, it's also a way to look at the different types of social media that I'm using. Um, I'm very ambivalent about social media at the moment. Um, and I'm writing about that a lot in a quite a, an extended piece um, about community and about where we're at with community right now and whether it's possible to have um, something that is truly what we could mean by community that comes from um, uh, that we get an access through the internet one way I've been trying to research that is by setting up something um, that's called Pleroma and Pleroma is a type of social network that you can host yourself here I'm using in a slightly different form today normally it looks a little bit differently perhaps I could find that if I just go to uh, PPP at Madaganalia.eu, which is where you can find it. Um, so normally it looks a little bit different. So here you're going to get a photograph that I've got from Beth Gellert in North Wales. Um, and this is how I normally look at it and normally access it. Um, I didn't actually know how to find my favorites on here. Mentions, blah, 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 notifications. Um, but there's a lot of favorites that I've got. So every time you click a kind of a favorite on here, then it'll be stored away somewhere. Um, but this is pretty much what it looks like. And as you can see, I guess it kind of imitates what, what Twitter is. And Pleroma is, is working on, um, it's something called Activity Pub. And it's something called the, the Federation. Um, I've tried to describe this in some ways by saying it's like having a, a lots of different pubs and you might go to a number of different pubs and you might know people who tend to hang out at these different pubs um, and essentially Twitter there is one Twitter um, there is only the one and everybody who, who joins Twitter and who you can interact with and in Twitter here we have uh, Jeffrey Lewis who is actually um, he's an expert on nuclear weapons and we need some of those guys around unfortunately right now I used to listen to his podcast uh, which I really recommend he calls himself arms control wonk and I think the podcast is called something similar as well um, but everybody essentially from Jeffrey Lewis to some dude that you know around your the corner where you live um, is is on the same Twitter with these federated social media uh, networks it's kind of different because there's lots of different ones and everybody has their own kind of local pub essentially everybody has their own um, instance you call it that they that they sign up with but then these different instances can communicate with one another and you end up for example so here I think it's somebody called Karen and Karen.space is her own um, instance that she uses mine as you see up here is ppp at marginalia.eu and at the moment I'm the only person there so um, if you go here I'm the only person signed up at this particular instance but then this instance communicates with a number of others and um, that offers it is said a number of advantages over Twitter and other kind of centralized uh, monolithic social networks it means that you can choose as the moderator as the um, administrator of your instance which other instances you're happy to um, to federate with to communicate with and um, I haven't done very much of that yet because I haven't really worked out how to do it so well just yet um, but nevertheless I, I am then linking to a number of other instances of these social media networks they don't have to be on Pleroma which is I'm using down here you can see it, it's it's a an instance of Pleroma the others don't have to be because there are a number of clients where you can interact with the Federation 
and a number of others. I'm not sure about Diaspora, which I've mentioned elsewhere, but there's other things called, I think, Friendica. Um, the main one for many people is called Mastodon, and that was, I think, the original that was really doing very well, and, and people started moving away from Twitter to Mastodon uh, to try and use that. Um, in any case, what I was going to do is, is kind of look at, back and forth to see what kind of discussions are, are being had, uh, and which I've picked up upon. Oh dear, why is this not working? I move from another room. Okay. That should hopefully work. <laughs> working now, sorry about that. Um, Alright, so we've got here to go back to where I, where I found it easier. This is what Mastodon looks like, by the way. This is the Mastodon kind of front end how it looks if you just sign up to uh, to Mastodon somewhere. I've got a couple of tips somewhere on um, on the wiki. Uh, so, Marginalia. And then, I think I said something about the Federation and how to choose an instance of a Federation. Maybe I didn't. And I've got some kind of... I don't know. I, I had some kind of... Um, how how to choose an instance of a federated social media network. So I've got kind of like somewhere there on the, on the wiki um, how to choose people who moderate well, who've got good governance, and so on. So the identity in the community. You, there's ways to choose uh, the, the, the best instance for you, and it'll shape, kind of shape your um, understanding, really. Uh, it'll shape your experience a lot. Um, but to get rid of that, so... A lot of people are trying to get people off Facebook, off Twitter to a lesser extent. Uh, Twitter still has a reputation as being kind of cool and, and a lot of these open source designers still kind of use it, which I'm not sure why that is and nobody's quite certain, I think, why that is. Um, there is a lot of communication there, but there's also a lot of kind of, I guess, abuse um, of women, of ethnic minorities, LGBTQ people and the like. In any case, let's go straight back to these favorites. I can only show maybe 10 or 12, I think it is, on this kind of Pleroma instance, so I'll just try to go through a few of them. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, and I'll be talking about this in the, uh, in the essay that I'm writing at the moment. There's been a lot of discussion about how to move forward with Mastodon in particular. So as I say, I'm on this Pleroma, which is kind of this slightly different way of approaching the Federation, and some people really hate it. There's a lot of um, strong opinions about all of these things, um, about uh, how to approach recreating social media um, in a world where Facebook is essentially undermining democracy. And I think one of the big questions actually is how much of that is down to the fact that Facebook is a really malicious organization run in a, in a really awful way with money coming from people who are really against democracy and uh, and, and try to undermine it and uh, trying to, to, to lead towards decommunalization and just this very hierarchical world where you've got the kingmakers at the top, you know, um, and the nobodies at the bottom, uh, the marginal people. And how much of that actually just how much can you recreate that experience and leave a lot of that kind of decommunalization behind? And I'm not sure you can do it perfectly well yet. I, I haven't been convinced. So here, Katanona, Katanano. I'm not sure this social network thing is a good idea. I, I, I think we were better off when we had blogs and blog roles. All right, so some people just don't think that actually social media is um, it, it, it clicks into this very distracting way of behaving and this really instant way of behaving, instantly reacting to things. And how much does that kind of tweak our, our mindset to really unconstructive ways of behaving? And this is coming about, um, you probably can't see my mouse pointer here, by the way, so I'm going to underline things now and again. Also, I'm missing some bits of the discussion about trending topics. So, as I say, over the last few days, it's been an interesting place, time to be in, and, and kind of observing the, the Federation um, from this perspective, because there's a lot of talk about governance. Um, Mastodon is led by one guy, Gargron, he's called, uh, he ca calls himself here. 
and so he's down here Eugen or okay so this guy here and there's been a lot of talk about him and um, the thing is he wanted to bring about trending topics so I guess we can probably find it not too with not too much difficult if we go to Twitter here and we got all this crap trendy trendy profile so it's kind of in, in, in check here uh, PyCon so there's a Python conference coming up actually interesting enough that could be interesting to me so I, I you know I could look at that and see I don't know what's uh, I, I guess I've interacted with that before and then it's it's coming up and it's telling me what I should do you know um, so okay so that maybe that maybe that's happening now um, all right so so there you have game dev. I'm not really interested in, in, in game development. I don't actually play games at all. World Bicycle Day, you know, okay, fair enough. People skills, Sunday morning. Things never said in The Godfather. So a lot of this is absolute crap. And then there's just one that kind of is, is very, vaguely interesting. The thing is that um, a lot of people have gone to uh, Mastodon because they expected that there would be better ways of dealing with abuse. And... Um, some of them found that that was the case and they found it a rather more kind of friendly place to be and some people haven't so much and they've been talking to uh to, to eugen I'm, I'm gonna call him um apologies if i'm getting that wrong and some of them claim that he's not been listening quite so much in terms of that and that he's not being um listening to feedback of people who, who consider themselves vulnerable he runs, as well as writing the software, he runs one of the big um, kind of Mastodon instances where a lot of people have, have got involved. And because I guess it's I guess it's pretty big, um, and then there's a lot of people there. You tend to be visible, and if there are people who were tending to get abuse and harassment before, they're saying that they were getting that again. They were saying that uh, having these trending topics can be abused. Um, and that there's various ways to do that and people can be targeted for, I don't know, talking about a certain thing or, 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 or whatever it might be. Um, and I kind of did have a handle on what all that involves, but in any case, it really kicked off and um, he was taking a lot of crap for his decision to do that and he's, he's kind of eventually backed off from doing it. But then you've got some old school people who are saying, yeah, I kind of like, uh, I just like blog posts and I like this and whatever else. Um, so he now, uh, open source software is developed and has been developed, oh dear, I didn't want to do that, um, has been developed on GitHub. Um, if we go to GitHub, we'll see how he, uh, he develops the software here and this is what's called um, some issues. So you kind of, uh, instant instance admin should be able to easily disable the trending hashtag feature. If you're not a coder, you might not ever look at GitHub. Um, it's a big deal now because it's looking like um, Microsoft will take it over. And sometimes they've done that and closed down things which are more free and open source, as they're called, that, that not run by big corporations, but run, I guess you could say, by the people, for the people, or whatever, you know. Um, and that's what kind of GitHub has really enabled that to happen. So what do you do? You write your code, and then you publish it on GitHub and other people can interact with it and they can also take it, copy it and change it. And you can do that with um, with Mastodon essentially, but also you can write where you want things to change and you can write about issues, but you can write anything. And a lot of this stuff has become quite um, heated discussions. He's locked it now. There's some people saying some nice stuff, you know, I think the following settings would be a good idea, blah, blah, blah. The thing is that he's writing the software and then anybody can get involved and just say, like, I want this, I want this. Um, it's kind of his software, but at the same time, a lot of people now are relying on it for uh, communication and other things like that. And it's really got very heated about who should be able to choose what gets done next and, and things like that. Um, so here he is. Uh, this is another kind of software related uh, thing here where he's saying, I think more forks would take a lot of pressure from me. I need to find a way to highlight and to promote them. So if you imagine just a fork, I'll try and do a fork, like the tines of a fork. So essentially now you've got Mastodon and it's one thing, but you can take that and then you can 
have or try not to swear at you, you, you can fork it by taking it where it's developed now and developing it slightly differently. So then that would mean that, that Gargron, let's call him, would continue to, to, to develop it this way and somebody else will kind of change it and develop it up here. So you've got two versions of it developing from a single point. So it kind of, it, it, the fork, well, it, it forks, <laughs> you know, it, it turns into two, uh, two paths from one. Uh, and you can do that with open source software. You can just you can't do it with Microsoft because it's um, proprietorial, which means it's owned and there is intellectual prop property associated with it. You can do it with things like Firefox. You can do it with things like um, I don't know, um, well Mastodon, Pleroma. You can just take the software as it is, make a copy, and then change it however you like. So that's where the whole free and open source thing uh, comes from. So open source you can see the code, you can look at the, the source of the things that you're running um, and free is just um, you're free to change it in many ways, it, it depends on the type of, of the license but um, it can mean free as in free beer meaning that it's just it doesn't cost you anything but it can also mean free as in free speech that you can take it and just change whatever you like in it All right. Um, so it might mean that if let's say somebody doesn't like this favorites all right then you change it uh, for example if you remember on Twitter if, if any of you are familiar with Twitter um, it's actually really stupid and irritating it's just a really crap design feature that actually if I favorite something now every bugger can see what I'm doing all right it's kind of frustrating and stupid I think because if I retweet something then I, I take something so I, if I think this is great I'll just kind of retweet it and it goes from my account and anybody's following me will see it as well nobody really is following me on this account but um, that's beside the point whereas if you favorite something I used to use that just as to, to, to remember it um, this is what I'm doing here I'm looking over the things that I've looked at in the past sometimes you don't have time to look over them um, so I use it as just like save for later and then I come back maybe or never and, and look over those favorites later on whereas now you just favorite something and it's, it doesn't differentiate at all from what you do with, with um, retweet it just kind of throws it up in somebody's timeline arbitrarily and says like hey look what Christopher Roswell's looking at right now he thinks this is cool right if I wanted to show everybody I'd retweet it so that's kind of really irritating but Twitter not being free and open source software you can't actually change it and you can't say that's stupid I'm just gonna take it and change it um, but also it's kind of like you can have the debate but at the moment um, unlike many free and open source projects which are really people are relying on then um, it's just one guy here so people are getting kind of frustrated that look there's a, there's a whole infrastructure being built up on this and yet kind of it's it's one single guy making the decisions so he's saying having the fork and and, and having the, the software to be copied and changed in some way would take the pressure off him and he's had a lot of pressure on him the last few days I haven't really been envying him at all um, all right so uh, this maybe we'll look at it maybe we won't so um, is somebody saying we need a failed project archive and material science or at least solar energy materials it's sad that all my effort put into investigating a material goes wasted if it doesn't work. Um, this is kind of interesting. Somebody's agreeing with it. Um, so I wanted to just kind of favorite it to show that, yeah, I think this is a cool thing that's being discussed here. Uh, it would be very nice if people were able to publish their failed stuff and still get due credit. Um, I think, look, science progresses through falsification. So I thought this was cool and that's why I favorited it. All right. So um, I don't know if that's an abstruse conversation or not but that's exactly how science moves forward is by by kind of getting it wrong and just trying something and and it's for me important to note that the the impulse to try something it, it really doesn't matter whether you're right about your hypothesis or not you, you should be um, credited with making the effort to discover whether something is is true or not irrespective of whether your initial hypothesis appears to be correct um, or is, is given credence by your by your work so I kind of like that idea um, but I can get rid of that now and this is resist Berlin saying unpopular opinion I don't think we should make free and federated replacements for every proprietary social media site just because we can it's a no-brainer um, so I kind of like this because I'm not sure that, as I said at the beginning, I guess it's uh, 
it's difficult to say whether we can actually um, get it better, you know, by by making our own versions of this. There's a lot of people getting angry over this five, this five, five few days, um, and it's kind of really stressful actually being dealing with these conversations. It's just everybody shouting over everybody. It's like being in a. I said it was like being in a bloody British lock-in in like the 1990s, the late 1990s, and it's just like people getting. I'm just shouting over each other. Um, we'll look at that maybe with a favourite on on Twitter later on because that's kind of like a comment about the kind of male styles of conversation, which is mainly uh, kind of appropriate to that. But um, but I kind of think that I uh, the jury's out for me whether whether this is better. You know, I, I'd prefer. I think there's a lot of people right now who are putting a lot of their social energies and they're investing into these kind of social spaces online. And I'm not convinced that it doesn't then mean that it's a wasteland when I step outside of my door, you know? And I don't want it to be, you know? I, I, sometimes you go to physical places and you think, Christ, this, this place is dead because everybody's trying to make friends online and trying to, you know, boost their social graph or their kind of their personal brand. And if you talk to a bunch of random people on the internet, then you can convince them you're fucking great. Um, but they don't have to know you and they don't have to invest in you and they're not they're not so invested in empathizing with you either so i'm not really convinced that that's just uh, a functional way of operating socially whether or not it's kind of important for us to to try and engage in some ways i think we could do with pulling back a little bit from the the the, the, the digital and kind of investing more into the spaces around us because wherever you live with a little bit of investment you can probably start to find somebody and find some overlap even if you're living out of the back of beyond i've lived in in north wales and struggled to find stuff going on but still i found kind of like little music um places and just gone to record shops and said hey you know what's going on in terms of life scene around here come on t tell me something i found something there um all right this is about archiving the internet and how things won't disappear. It's a little bit technical. We won't get into it. It's been speaking for a while. Um, and all right. This is about the European Union, who are possibly trying to kind of like close down things as well, because you know the, the European Union, though I'm for it and against Brexit um, and for the Czech Republic remaining in, in, in the European Union as well indeed, um, they do also do a lot of kind of shady kind of neoliberal stuff and I think that um, their way of moving forward and really trying to push kind of intellectual property sometimes as well as kind of uh, stifles debate and this is what it, this is talking about right here. All right. Um, Oh, and this is one difference where you get a lot of, as well. This is why people feel safer here, and in some ways I'm kind of slightly ambivalent about some aspects of it and some of the conventions around it, but nevertheless it's kind of a nicer um, way of approaching things, I guess. On Twitter it's just all out there, and people talk about being, um, I guess, um, triggered by discussions of, in, in, a, in a very extreme sense, um, rape, for example, and... Um, and sexual assault and things like that. It's just always there, and it, and it, it and if you've had experiences of that, then it, it really triggers you. It puts you into a really bad space where you've, you know, um, where you've been in the past, and it, and it goes deep into you. Here, um, you get something called CW content warning, and you can kind of say show more. So if you want to, you know, you read this. Content warning this stuff. Don't let people suffer another day of uncontent warning discourse. Um, because there's a lot of this stuff yesterday and people want to just kind of shut it down, you know? And it's just that, like people are just shouting over you about something that's just like really getting a little bit, um, not necessarily abusive in this sense, but um, just aggressive and kind of just a lot of aggro floating around. You just want to tune it out a little bit. You don't want to hear all that. So. Um, I'm terrible because I kind of have to click on it, but it's, um, but here it's kind of, you're using content warnings for things that aren't about these, these very traumatic experiences, exactly, and there's a lot of people saying, no, you must put these things behind a content warning if it's just about a political discussion, so yeah, there's, there's, there's instances that say, please use content warning for anything about politics, because we're only triggered by politics all of the time, which I understand if you're vulnerable, but I think kind of like, 
politics is a part of life and we've got to kind of deal with it. It's my my sense, and I guess as an administrator, that's that's what I'd kind of think. I think some of the the, the conventions become a little bit um, a little bit too much at times. Um, but nevertheless, that's that's my own personal take. But here. Um, it's about the fork again, and there's a lot of this talk about the fork and blah, blah, blah. So you've got a little bit more of that, uh, more about harassment and so on. I'll just mention this because it's a really positive thing that's happening as well. So you talk about this, this federation, these federated kind of social media sites and things like that. Not one monolithic kind of corporate um, entity, but just lots of individual kind of community entities. So I, I can, you know... You guys could actually, if you if you chose to, if you chose to, to, to understand and like what I'm doing with Marginali, you could you could join the um, the PPP Marginalia.eu um, social media site that I just kind of set up. It was originally just for a research project, but um, but I could keep it up and people could join. So then you can have people that you trust within a given community, or you know it might be an international community, but you'd understand it, and so you can join that. But Pixel Fed is. Uh, a photo sharing site and um, I guess it kind of looks like Instagram you know and this is it and it's been launched just a couple of days ago so I've put a few of my photos there I'd like to continue to do so um, it is at the moment it's just kind of one guy who's hosting it but um, eventually it will be possible for, for more people to do so um, and so it comes up and it's kind of like it's squared off here but you can keep it uh, I'm not sure if you can do this on Instagram you know here's just a lot of photographs on film basically that I took um, over the years Beth Gellert kind of uh, here is Budapest and uh, you can give a couple of details about it again the site isn't working yet and it's not yet federated because I can't well he's just launched something where I could begin to try to set up my own instance um, I probably couldn't do it technically at the moment, and um, it's kind of no point right now. I don't have my own servers at home. Um, in any case, so that's that's what it looks like, and I think that's kind of cool. And I'd like to move away from using Flickr because it's just it's going down the toilet really very rapidly. Moving over to Twitter, what kind of content do we see here? So um, here is the arms control wonk, the, uh, the, the the expert on uh, nuclear deproliferation and nuclear weapons um, generally. I would really kind of recommend that anybody listens to um, to that site. You will be triggered by it, absolutely. Uh, but really, we have to understand that this is the world we're living in. Uh, I think we kind of forgot from, from the 1990s, I guess, we kind of forgot that it's the case that we have nuclear weapons everywhere. And... Uh, for a very long time, according to a book by Daniel Ellsberg, which you should also look up. Um, it's called The Doomsday Machine, and you should really read that. Um, the nuclear codes in, in the United States were a succession of zeros. Um, people told them they have to have a kind of passphrase to, to, to set off these weapons, and uh, the military guys in America kind of said yes we'll agree with that on paper but zero 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 was I believe for decades the the code to nuclear weapons um, quite recently I listened to another podcast by the what are they called this American life and that was also about nuclear weapons and they talked about some of the um, very very close calls we've had with nuclear weapons in that time um, Daniel as Elberg himself who is absolutely an expert on these things, um, says that it's a miracle that we haven't had a an, an nuclear instance before. In any case, here we have a uh, fuck of a non-proliferation triptych, says uh, Jeffrey Lewis. All right, so who we got? Um, Saddam Hussein, no nuclear weapons. Hung, as we see here, uh, executed. Um, Gaddafi, so no nuclear weapons. Uh, and this is what happened to him next. Um, okay, so we've got North Korea and uh, a smiling Donald Trump. And uh, this is then how you deal with, with the guys who have got nuclear weapons. And that really gives a sign of what, what you should do if you're a leader of a state somewhere. So I thought that was interesting. Um, this is kind of cool. Tom Holland, uh, gentleman scholar. There you go. So 
I am a Hindu, a Muslim, a Christian, a Parsi, a Jew, Gandhi. And only a Hindu could say that, Jinnah. So you discuss that as you will. So again, the, the discussion on Twitter is broader, frankly, because there are, there's, there's a greater demographic of people who obviously use these very approachable um, social media um, though they are monolithic, kind of, um, they have endless problems with privacy. Uh, couldn't even begin to get into that. But nevertheless, the, the discussions you get are kind of broader. And so, on, it's particularly at the moment that everybody on Mastodon is talking about Mastodon. And there are times on Twitter that it feels like everybody's talking about Twitter when you change, for example, the the operation of the of the the um, the like button or whatever else, and it turns like that for 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 a period of time. Um, but here we got about Pride. Um, I have seen kind of toots on Mastodon on Pleroma about uh, Pride, certainly, but uh, we've got one there. Um, again, you do see things on, on Mastodon about kind of um, politics and stuff like that. It, it becomes a bit a little bit more obscure. But um, here is a journalist who faked his own death with uh, the Ukrainian state, which is kind of odd and played to the advantage of Russia, really, without without a doubt. I, I haven't massively looked into this story, but um, it's one of those times I've, I've, I've forwarded it to go back and read over it. But um, crazy story. Again, Jesus, season finale 2018, you know, it's just absolutely ludicrous. Uh, Google will stop working with Project Maven, where they're, they're working with drone strikes and things like that. A lot of their engineers finally stood up and said, this is just morally unacceptable. Uh, they might have said that about kind of mass surveillance and, uh, and um, the, the, the data mining that, 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 that Google continues to do. Uh, and they, they kind of didn't um, resign um, over that. But wonderful Google, who once said, um, you know, do not be evil, was their, was their corporate um, strategy or slogan. Um, they're not going to be cooperating in, in introducing kind of artificial intelligence into uh, drone strikes and operations like that. Isn't that a, a, a beautiful thing? Um, I first looked over this and I thought it was actually true. Um, this, I guess, click hole or something like the onion, uh, I'm guessing. More bad press for Elon. The car Elon Musk launched into orbit has fallen back down to Earth and crushed Malala Yousafzai. Okay, um, and then Malala has actually kind of uh, retweeted that, which is quite funny. Um, it didn't, but um, a lot of people are kind of hating on Elon right now for good reason, actually. Um, you know, I've read a few articles recently about him and uh, how he spoke to his ex-wife and. Uh, I am the alpha in this relationship, and there he goes. He's acting like a boy child again. Uh, a couple of months after um, saying that he's going to sell, uh, what was it fire? No, what do you call them? Um, Flamethrowers to uh, teenage boys, presumably, um, because of a film joke in a film. Not a particularly good film either, really, but or kind of funny. You know, space balls. I remember watching it as a kid. But what is that? You know, so um, he's been getting a bit. Apparently, he steals kind of code as well. He steals free and open source code, and then he puts it into his own and claims it his own or whatever else. But uh, there we go. Um, oh, I haven't looked over that. Uh, it's it's well, whatever it existed. So it's one of those things I clicked on and. Uh, will probably not go back and read, but sometimes I do. Um, all right, well, we'll end on this, I think, today. Um, David Lammy, great, follow him, and um, he's one of the only people talking the truth in Britain right now. Please, please look over it. This is, again, talking about kind of uh, the... Well, in this case, it's about people like not, you know, they find 50 people who maybe, you know, out of nearly 9,000 checks on the NHS health tourists, there's just 50 that, that are liable to pay, there's just a great waste of money from this absolute arse of a man, Jeremy Hunt, complete <sighs> morally these people are just absolutely at the bottom, it's it's really impossible, um, but in any case we'll look at this because this is the more interesting one um, so this is a thread about mansplaining 
uh, by Erin Brooke. Um, and I remember initially when I heard the phrase mansplaining, I was kind of irritated by the, um, I'm kind of, I'm not irritated by specifically kind of like feminist um, neologisms. I'm more kind of, I, I guess I'm a little bit autistic with things like this. I don't like even anything formed from Watergate, you know, kind of, I can't remember the last gate that, that, that we had that was a big, let's call it Elon Gate. That would be a, be a really stupid one. I think I called that you know, in a joke, kind of hashtag or something the other day. Um, but a big scandal, and then you put gate at the end from Watergate. That just kind of irritates me because it's just gate of its own is a very arbitrary morpheme, and I don't know why it's thrown together like that. Mansplain kind of irritated me a little bit at first, but actually now I kind of see it as useful. Um, I also use it occasionally in a different form, aspsplain, which is for aspergic explaining which I sometimes kind of do because we like to throw facts around I think it's kind of not 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 intended kind of uh, in terms of condescension which uh, mansplaining clearly is um, so she's talking about kind of uh, what where mansplaining comes from and what it is and um, I thought it was kind of quite good she's so she's talking about the theory called gender lect theory by Deborah Tannen um, and She's saying there, there are two different styles. So again, she calls it, it's a little bit binary. It's a bit, it's a bit kind of saying that there is a, a man and a female and, and that there's a binary, the, the gender is kind of binary, um, which most people don't really believe anymore. I, I don't believe it either. Um, but in competition style communication, the person who talks the longest and the loudest wins. Topics shift more frequently as speakers try to move conversation to their area of expertise or, expertise or comfort so that they can talk more and thus win. In connective style communication, the speaker wins by deepening connections with others. People tend to stay on topic longer in order to explore those connections and will pass the mic around and ask questions. Um, I do think that this is kind of more typical of, of, of a kind of masculine style of, of, of communication. Um, I think there's other things as well, because I think a masculine style of communication is typically about things more than kind of emotions, and men tend to get hooked up on facts rather than, oh, I say men, sorry, a masculine style. I would personally say that most men have a more masculine style, most women have a more feminine style of communication, but I think that kind of, uh, and I do kind of agree that, that, that um, with some people who say that uh, people who are autistic tend to have an extremely masculine style of communication and have to perhaps work at trying to um, bolster their own kind of feminist styles of uh, feminine style of communication. Um, this was interesting. It kind of connects, I think, to how people communicate online uh, because the very aggressive style of masculine, like "I am right, you're wrong," is is clear everywhere and it's kind of clear as the default um, both on Twitter I think and unfortunately I think also on Mastodon um, so that's one of the ways it goes wrong I think I think we've seen that over the last few days there's nobody having a connective style that, that they're completely they're being shouted over like like drunken um, well, I say Brits again. This is my experience in Britain. Um, it's like drunken men in a pub, essentially shouting over each other. Um, and I think the feminine connective style, if it is that, um, there could be more of it, I think, everywhere. Um, I think really people have learned this shouty style in any number of ways, but also it's very much the, the basis of our civilization is kind of like competing with one another. So I think kind of capitalism has a lot to blame in terms of getting rid of the balance because you need the balance between masculine styles and feminine styles there is there is a reason for each i think and then there's a way that it, go, it becomes kind of almost pathological and just unbalanced and um i think in our society as a whole and on social media as well um we're seeing that it's completely out of balance and i think uh, erin brooks got a point here which is why it's one of my favorites of the last uh, few couple of weeks few weeks so um there we have it for today, I guess. Um, all we'll do at the end is just scroll down to look at this Tory, because my God, that is an absolute. Uh, this is what we have in Britain, and this is how, what we have in Britain. I wish we didn't. But in any case, uh, I'll end there, I think, and uh, I will put that up at some point and uh, give you the link. So. If you've listened through all of that, 
Thank you very much, and I'll, I'll be back again sometime soon with an update on what's going on with issue zero, um, and maybe another one, another show like this again sometime soon. So, thanks for listening. <laughs>